to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, Travis! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Pain. All I know is pain. Welcome into this podcast. It's not even week one. <laughs> pain. Why do I play this stupid game? <laughs> yeah. Heal up, Travis. Heal up. Take, yeah. take, take a break. T- take your time, take brother. Take your time. Make sure you just, you don't want to rush things. Your knees uh, is a little hurt. Just take, let's say one game off. I, it's a long season. Just I take don't, the, so many people are I mad know at what you our, right I now. know what our job is, but I hate fantasy football. <laughs> I mean, I was so, I, I'm so excited for the start of the season, and I just happen to be the manager in our main league of record. With a keeper. Mm-hmm. I didn't draft him in the first. Everybody out there trolling me. He was a keeper. Travis Kelsey. Mm. Maybe you've heard of him. I have. He's awesome. Plays Thursday. Zeus, does he? <laughs> <laughs> so what Jason's little giddy, stupid attitude is, is the fact that he realized this morning that we play each other week one. Oh, do we? And so instead of like sympathizing <laughs> with the millions of Kelsey managers out there, he has chosen to sympathize with, once again, himself. Yes. And his hopes uh, of beating me. And I also have him in the, in the Dynasty League. And so I can't even get one week of just looking forward to game one. I've got to be back in the mire. <laughs> To be fair, back in the injury bog of sadness, I have him in the listener league. So it's you know, you, you know. <laughs> but if I had to pick one league, it's the league of record, obviously. And uh, uh, so you know, th- we just try to look for the bright side we, of things. We will talk about the Kelsey injury in the news. It's not that bad. If you're just hearing about it, it's not that bad. It's just a little bit he bad. He says to himself in the mirror, "No, it's not that bad." His his okay. We'll talk about it now. The ligaments, all of the the knee parts are intact. That's great. His brother came out and said he thinks he's going to play Thursday. His brother, who had this same injury, yeah, from kicking a piece of firewood. <laughs> that was a great interview. I will say that it's while good. He, his he's, brother plays the exact same position, right? Right. Knows Center. knows knows what the the rigors of what happens to your body playing tight end. That being said, um, running routes and such. He did. Jason Kelsey did say that. His knee did not swell up when it happened. Uh, he got the bone bruise, ligaments were intact, but he didn't have swelling. And he did mention that Kelsey does have swelling right now. So they're trying to get the swelling down. We'll for know tomorrow today. Night. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I think we'll know later Later today. I don't. I think we'll know at game time. Like, okay. he'll be a game time. Well, we'll know more. Yeah. I think yeah. we'll know more because he's supposed to test it out today. And so I think that'll get reported. Um, but the Kelsey, look, it's just a l- – let me transition this into purpose, meaning <laughs> – Something other than just vitriolic hate and sadness for this stupid game. Um, Here's your warning. Here's your red alert. Here's what's about to happen for 17 weeks. We all go into the season. We have our drafts and we draft healthy players. And then we are dealt. We are dealt hands that we didn't expect. And we've got to play them. Fantasy football is part of it is the draft. But then a huge part of it is how do you react in the season? Because things happen. Players don't work out. Players get hurt. Players break out out of nowhere. How do you react? And that's what the season's all about. In other news, Jason got us an HOA violation. <laughs> yeah, whoopsie doozles. Here at the uh, <laughs> studio, I get an email last night. Your 15 foot championship flag pointing people to the studio was against HOA terms. Yeah. I'll I'll pay the fine. I'll I'll pay the fine and uh, be happy to do it again next year. Yeah, when, when I'm champ again for my twenty foot flag. <laughs> yes. So I do apologize to the HOA for Jason's championship. Uh, Sorry for having fun, HOA. I, I know, but that's what HOAs are for. Yeah. Fun killers. Fun killers. Uh, the site rankings for week one, the start sit tool. All up on the website right now, thefantasyfootballers.com. All the articles for the end season starting to hit. All the end season stuff is available to you. You can go check that out. And then, of course, 
This is your 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 formal invitation to the Foot Clan. Come support the show and receive a ton of in-season tools, resources. Uh, your start sit tool gets better. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to join all of the Discord channels with over thirty thousand Foot Clan members. You get the Stream Finder, which I use all the time. The Flex Rankings, if you're really wanting to compare cross positionally all of our strength of schedule red zone reports everything that we use ourselves it's all in there and that's join the foot.com and then you get an extra episode of the show every single week and if you get in there quick assuming you hear this episode before i believe uh 4 p.m pacific today yeah you will have a chance to join the megalobowl so if you haven't been in there that's also a perk of supporting the show at join the foot this is our in season uh it's the place to be. Yeah, Jason. you two are uh, doing your Mega Bowl draft in forty-five minutes. Yeah, that is correct. We got to get the show on the road. Is that not what we're doing? <laughs> is it not on the road yet? No, it doesn't feel like it's on the road yet. Um, we also have a new segment. Let's kick it off. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Pretty, pretty good job on that, oh, on that drop, Mike. We are hungry. Yeah, yeah. And Jason is hungry from seeing, I am hungry seeing the video for the donuts. Yeah, those donuts in that <laughs> little intro looked pretty good. You don't want to turn around though here in the studio and see the back Ooh, wall. Oh, I see brother. it right in front of me. I can. We've got a monitor. I see that delicious food. I am hungry for more. So th this segment in the season is going to be taking a look at players that had kind of outlier breakout performances on that week, and then talking about whether we believe they will continue to ascend right now the season hasn't started so we are looking at players that finished strongly some players that have the ability to level up tier wise maybe you've seen flashes maybe you've had some nibbles jason mm -hmm. are you hungry for more i'm hungry for more who's your guy my guy is someone that we saw just absolute brilliance from after two-thirds of the season of irrelevance from sure <clears throat> That is Christian Watson. Um, from week 10 on, a 22.3% target share, 2.58 yards per route run, eight total touchdowns, which obviously that is unsustainable. But he, well, he first of all, just as an athlete, he is better than you. And when I say yeah. you, I mean other NFL defensive players. Like he is the supreme of the supreme athletes. He's one of those, like, you know, when Debo Samuel is out there with the ball in his hands, Sorry, defenders. He's he's, he's a better. better than, he's better than you. He's a better athlete than you. And and this is what Christian Watson is. He is a big. No, oh yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. Among rookies, uh, rookie wide receivers with fifty plus targets since twenty fourteen, he ranks seventh in yards per route run. Uh, the the list there is you know Odell Beckham, AJ Brown, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Chris Olave. Olave. Whoa. <laughs> How dare you? Chris Olave and uh, Tyreek Hill. <laughs> oh, so, dear, Chris Olave, eh? <laughs> good, good player. <laughs> it's an impressive list of bona fide superstar wide receivers. I do believe that his opportunity is going to be very good with right now Romeo Dobbs still kind of dealing with his own uh, injury. And, and even if Dobbs is there and he was the preseason hero, Christian Watson's their best wide receiver. They have a lot of vacated targets, and they need a new identity on offense. I think Christian Watson has the chance to really, truly break out in a special way. Um, you know, and, and week one, it's off to a good start. We're actually going to talk about him a little bit more tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, I believe Al Borland picked up Christian Watson in the draft. Is that he did. accurate? He I did. did. The, pa the Packer fan? I think it's coincidence. a great pick. Yeah. Um, I'll I, jump in. Go I'll ahead, jump, I'll jump in because I also have a Packer. And a player who has been talked about very little over the offseason because the expectations were very high last year and they were not even close to met for A.J. Dillon, backup running back of the Green Bay Packers. But I just wanted to highlight kind of the end of season, what happened. The split between A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones was actually, it was very, very close. This was not Aaron Jones taking over. From weeks 12 through 18, Dylan at 11.5 attempts per week, Jones at 11.7, basically dead even. Dylan at 2.8 targets, Jones at 3.8. That's not a surprise that Aaron Jones had more, but 
almost three targets a week. That's interesting. And then over that time period, A.J. Dillon's six rushing touchdowns to Aaron Jones having none. A.J. Dillon actually had 229 opportunities this past year, only finished as running back 25. So that's where things were disappointing. He's entering the contract year. There's the, the what is, as Jason said, what is the identity of the team? Sure, it could be all this. Jordan Love is fantastic. I and mean, the new era begins because Green Bay just hits on quarterbacks. That's what they seem to do. Or maybe they, they turned to A.J. Dillon a little bit more. There was the whispers in the bushes. They yeah, were, the Jonathan Taylor. That they were one of the uh, – they they placed their hat in the ring saying, we're, we'll trade for Johnny Taylor. Not successfully, but if you're trading for Jonathan Taylor, I mean, you're going to run the ball a whole bunch. Maybe they're going to run it a little bit more, and perhaps A.J. Dillon is the guy who carries the ball uh, up more than Aaron Jones, who's now getting a little bit older. So I think that he is – He's interesting because he's going so late in the draft, especially compared to last year. And he still has that situation that if Aaron Jones falls off or if Aaron Jones misses time, A.J. Dillon gets a whole bunch of opportunities on a weekly basis. Can he capitalize? Is he good enough? I don't, I don't think we know just yet because we've seen him be very hot and very cold, but I think that he is a name worth monitoring. Thank you. Oh, man. He was not worthy of that drop much last no, year. No, no. High the end, of, the end of the season was really great, though. Yeah, that that's always tough when you've been disappointed. You spend draft capital on a guy, totally and, agree. and it happens later. Uh, for me, the hungry for more candidate this week is Damian Pierce, running back for the Houston Texans. Uh, I made a controversial selection in our league of record draft. You did. So I, I, it was surprising. I don't know that it was controversial, but I was shocked because you took this player. Over Joe Mixon, who you have uh, been a proponent of. Yeah, and, and uh, you know my main reason for that was our three-keeper league of record. The main reason was based on my draft picks and the players on my roster. To me, I needed to take a shot on a player ready to level up. Not a player on the backside of his run running back career with a bunch of opportunity, which Mixon, I think Mixon's going to go out and give you a RB 10, 11, 12 season. Uh, and that will be fine. But I wanted to take the 23-year-old running back that is entering the prime of his career that maybe has more opportunity for ceiling to give you the surprise Josh Jacobs-esque type of season. I tried to identify that. And Damian Pierce, to me, he, he's hungry for more. He He had a season last year where the preseason, the hype was there. We all saw it, right? He was him. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is a... He a, went from like a double digit rounder due to his draft capital which was he was a day three pick if i'm not mistaken correct he was round four and then just over the off season he went from like i mean it was it was just like antonio gibson where it was this guy's going in round 13 and then by real draft time you know mid-august he was up into round five round four and and the truth is this was not a good football team but he he had a very good season for a rookie considering the situation he was put in. What surprised me was some of his reception numbers, despite losing 52 targets and 37 receptions to Rex Burkhead, who is now gone, he had a 43 reception pace from week four on. He ended the year with 30 receptions because he missed four games at the end of the year. So if he could upgrade that number, if he ends up at 45 to 50 receptions, that would be huge. That would be mm -hmm. a, a level up possibility. He had a seven run, seven game in a row run before he got hurt, where he was on pace for seventeen hundred rushing yards. That's the kind of thing that I'm looking for in that potential level up. And here is a really interesting stat, and it's nearly full foolproof. Over the last decade, we have seen twenty different second year running backs that got two hundred and seventy five touches. Okay, mm -hmm. all 20 finished in the top 18 and 17 of the 18 or sorry, 17 of the 20 were RB ones. So, you know, only four of those were on teams that made the playoffs. So it didn't matter if you were on a winning team. He had he was on pace for 338 opportunities last year. So you don't have to get 338. 275 is the bar for that number. And 17 of those 20 guys in year two, because that's the year for running backs, right? It's your prime opportunity for 
heavy workload, athleticism is at its peak, and you do, uh, that stat, only four teams made the playoffs. So it's an opportunity here, I think, to get higher upside than maybe people believed. I think he is being, uh, you know, the Texans as an organization and as a roster and as an offense and with the quarterback, I think that that drives him down draft boards. But I think he has the possibility to level up. So I, I made that choice in the draft. I mean, I took him over not just Joe Mixon, but took Najee. him over Najee Harris uh, and and made that decision. So I think he is a, a candidate for an upgraded season. And I think there's some other guys. Pacheco, Javante Williams, uh, if he's healthy, is going to be a draft day value. So some interesting names to mention. Sure. And this segment will continue, like I said, with players that have – Big performances and, and kind of whether we see them continuing through the season. We'll comment on those throughout the year. That was Hungry for More presented by Uber Eats. Jason. We need some Uber you're Eats. You're a fan right of Uber now. Eats. I am a big fan of Uber uh, Eats. With Uber Eats, get anything delivered? Uh, not not running backs, unfortunately, but uh, baby backs. Oh, yeah. Flapjacks. You got it. You can order now, right now. You can order now, right now in the app. <laughs> Uh, product availability <laughs> may vary by region. See the app for details. All right, let's talk. Uh, let's little, talk some news. Let's talk some more news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Did you hear about this Travis Kelsey guy? Let's just let's just put a ball on the conversation slash uh, cry fest from earlier. Hyper extended his knee in practice. His status is in doubt. The ACL and ligaments are intact. Matthew Betts, our injury expert, his comments, the bone bruise leads to pain, swelling, and stiffness. Usually multi-week injuries, depending on severity. Uh, week two is not a guarantee, but the nice thing is he would have a tremendous amount of time before week two. You, you saw this um, last year with George Kittle. I believe he missed two weeks. Was and, that last year? Thought, uh, no, oh, that maybe was, it, was, it was a couple be, years yeah, ago. Uh, missed two weeks. Yeah. As soon as he came back dominated this yes. is not going to be a long-term injury that's why it is good news yeah and uh Kadarius Tony Chiefs wide receiver limited but expected to play on Thursday so we think we'll see Kadarius Tony out there for the uh kickoff week you realize that Travis Kelsey on a per game basis is going to vacate 52 targets 700 yards and two <laughs> touchdowns per game per game so there will be a lot of it, it's one of those things like we're, you could take a shot there we're gonna 100%. be building DFS lineups this week and and would you say that Sky's the limit, Jason. I sure wouldn't, <laughs> but you guys would. Yeah, Sky Moore's. There's an opportunity there. Isaiah Pacheco's off the injury report. He's going to play. Uh, Jarek McKinnon could could take some of those targets. We that, do have a Thursday night breakdown coming up. Well, I, look, I know, I know. I'm telling the people. You, they want to hear it all whenever I want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, we'll talk about the Thursday night game. I guess then I will save the. The line movements until that preview. Uh, Commanders wide receiver Terry McLaurin progressing towards recovery day to day. They are still hopeful he can play against Arizona. It's good news. The last time he got on the field and really tested it, it went well. So I think it's trending towards him playing as of this moment. Uh, week one injury reports will come out today, and and we'll know more. Mark Andrews is supposed to practice today. We'll have, like Jason said, more news. Yeah, that uh, we are on Mark Andrews' watch now. Yeah, but you don't want your superstar tight end to miss a game, Mike? I'd prefer not. Oh, yeah. that's Because that would suck, huh? Pick up <laughs> Isaiah your... Likely. If you have Mark Andrews or Travis Kelsey, pick up Isaiah Likely in case he is the starter. Yeah. All right. All right, that was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Thursday Night Breakdown. The Lions, the Chiefs, it's Thursday night. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has the Chiefs minus four and a half now. Oh, what? The over-under is 52 and a half. It used to be six and a half and almost 55. Ooh. Almost. Almost. Yeah. You can't. Actually, 55! I actually think it was 55. I, it says 54 and a half in here, but I think in some books it was 55. But the line has moved. It's moved. By two points. By a Kelsey. <laughs> So, this should be fun. I mean, it it, it's hard be. not to just pick the Chiefs at home in this game, which I, I'm i doing. Yeah, me too. Coward. But I do think that there's a possibility that we see, I mean, the 
fourth highest odds in the NFC. Yes, this to blew win, my mind. To win the conference. Is the Detroit Lions. The okay. fourth highest. Basically, you've got three great teams in the NFC, right? You've got the Niners, the Eagles, and the Cowboys. Those teams, I think most people look at them and say they are Super Bowl contending teams. And then you go, okay, fourth place in the NFC. It's, it's uh, oh, man, there is a... There is a gap, but it is according to uh, DraftKings Sportsbook. The Cardinals Sportsbook, are the fifth highest. <laughs> the Lions are the fourth highest odds to get out of the NFC to the championship. Um, and that's 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 really, really cool. But for this game specifically, when Andy Reid has time, when he is coming off a bye week or an offseason, um, <laughs> things go well. Patrick Mahomes, right now in five season openers, he's 5-0, and 73% completion rate. 18 touchdowns, zero interceptions. Here's their points scored since 2017, courtesy of Matthew Betts' tweet. 42-38-40-34-33-44. Now, just, what, just twisting the knife on that freaking Kelsey being not yeah, out there. But it is crazy because no Kelsey and obviously still no Tyreek Hill. This is a this is going to be a real test um, to see, okay, can you do it without all of these superstar weapons? Yeah. Is is Mahomes that yeah. good? Yeah. The answer is yes. So where does it go then? Like if Travis Kelsey is not out there, and you're everywhere, and you're saying, you're I think saying, McKinnon. Like I said, I think McKinnon's going to have a week one that makes people say, "Oh, that wasn't a last round pick." Uh, I think Isaiah Pacheco will have his opportunities. Kadarius Tony, Sky Moore, Justin Watson will probably have a huge game. That's no one will play him. Be. <laughs> Because people will play Justin Ross in the hopes and the dreams. The there's Richie James has his fan. Well, club. they'll play MBS, Rashi Rice. Yeah, they'll play all, but it'll be Justin Watson. <laughs> Noah Gray, Noah Gray would get the start if uh, Travis Kelsey wasn't out there. But I'm not afraid of Patrick Mahomes without Kelsey. I think he'll figure I agree. it out. Yeah. Uh, and then the Lions. I mean, this this is a game where look, Chris Jones is not going to start on the defensive line. For the Chiefs, he is not reported. Is he still holding out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's holding out, and and the team wow. is kind of the team made transactions to to kind of bolster their defensive line, and they're they're just they're in a stalemate right now. There's not been discussions or updates. He said he's willing to sit out through week eight, so that's according to him. He was his own source there. So when you look at the offensive weapons, you're going to get to see Jameer Gibbs for the first time. Uh, it's exciting. Kansas City's allowed the fourth most running back receptions last year. He's going to have a ton of them. So exciting. Whoa. Kyle just threw this stat in. Over the past five seasons, this is via ESPN, with Chris Jones on the field, first in NFL quarterback pressure percentage. Without Chris Jones on the field, 28th in NFL quarterback pressure percentage. This is a really good offensive line that the Lions have without Chris Jones. They should be able to stand in the pocket, have Jared Goff be the statue he wants to be, and deliver the ball a lot to Amon Ross St. Brown. A lot. Yeah, and and uh, I'm going to tell you right now, if you want the Josh or the Justin Watson for the Lions in this game, it's going to be Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds, they could have cut this guy and saved a bunch of money. They didn't do it. They lose Jamison Williams for the year. Um, they signed uh, Marvin Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> See, this, is what, see, this is what we're doing now, right? Yeah, but how fun was that? I mean, he's two years older, I think, than Thielen. No, they're the same age. Oh, they're they about are the 33. same age. Yeah, okay, if you turn 33, that was just super fun. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Marvin Jones and Thielen are the same age? What is that? Why is that reaction there? It's because Thielen's older or Marvin's younger than if, you thought? No, it's Marvin's younger than I thought. Yeah, I th I thought Marvin Jones was a older good two sure. years older than Adam Thielen, but it's you forget me, how old Adam Thielen is now. <laughs> See, that's why I always yeah, it's do pretty it because it's really fun. Uh, but yeah, anyway, Josh Reynolds will be involved. You'll get to see Sam Laporta and Jameer Gibbs, two rookies in this game. David Montgomery, he didn't take a snap in the preseason. That's am I right? I don't think he was on the field. Yeah, Kyle, are you there? I don't recall. I don't think I'll he look took, it up. I don't think he took a snap in the preseason. So there's a lot of people. There, there's a handful of these running backs that didn't get a chance to get on the field, and I think it's reflected in drafts. Like David Montgomery seemed like the kind of the resistant, or not. That's not the right word. The uh, eventually he had to go. People were just, well, I guess I have to take him now. It wasn't excitement. 
But he he's going to have a huge role in this offense. Yeah, it's uh, it's a dumb to be like, oh well, I guess I have to take yeah, zero David snaps. Montgomery. Da- David Montgomery is going to get a lot of goal line opportunities with this offense when they get inside the five with that offensive line. I think they'll help assist him into the end zone. He will be more touchdown dependent. Um, but you know, some of the beat writers are talking about how. These guys are being used somewhat similarly. I think David Montgomery might surprise with his involvement in the passing game. When when they talk about what David Montgomery can do that Jamal Williams couldn't, that's the first thing that they talk about is just an upgrade in the passing game. And, you know, with right now with the wide receiver core and the, the suspension to Jamison Williams, I, I do think that these running backs will be very involved in, in this specific game tomorrow night. The Lions have lost both season openers but they lost with 33 and 35 points the last two years. And it's going to happen again. I think we're going to see a really good first game. It would have been better with Kelsey, but we're going to see a really good game. I mean, this is a 52 and a half point over under. That's still a great number uh, despite the change in the line. And I'm excited about it. I think, you know, our our listeners, they're submitting start sit questions on the website. Uh, Were you going to add something there, Jay? Uh, I I've got more to talk about, but um, <laughs> no, you. I mean, what what? Well, what I'm just going to throw a couple of the the questions, the most popular ones about this game. Yeah, David Montgomery playing him on Thursday night against uh, the the Chiefs mm-hmm. without Chris Jones, or Clay Herbert against Green Bay's defense this week. Ooh, I think that's a pretty close one. That it is, is that is very very close. I lean David Montgomery in general, but then when you factor in that this is opening kickoff, if it's close, if I've got a guy where I'm like, man, I really genuinely don't know who to start. I, I can make good arguments for either. I'm not not playing the guy playing on opening day. I want I want my players in there. I'm I'm going to be watching this game. I want that excitement. So um, even without that, I would I would personally start David Montgomery over with the with the line in this and my expectation that it hits the over touchdowns are where David Montgomery is going to make his fancy points. I, I expect him to get one today, tomorrow. Okay. okay. All right. Um, what were you going to add on the game? You had some more comments. So I have a little bit of worry about Isaiah Pacheco. And the reason uh, for this matchup is simply because, and obviously teams change so much from year to year, the, the total defenses, total team defenses are not sticky. But we have to remember how good the Lions actually were last year against the run. When you were talking about on the ground against running backs, they were they were really, really good. Number two and in they terms were of fancy points given up. So bad in the secondary. And now you have Patrick Mahomes with good pass-catching running backs in both Jarek McKinnon and the name we don't mention often, but Clyde Edwards-Alaire will be on the field, will be involved, and I think he's going to catch passes. I think, I think you're going to just see Patrick Mahomes spread the ball out and throw it a million times and up the gut on the ground to Pacheco might not be as successful. Yeah, it's, it's definitely possible. Uh, they're going to have to distribute – to a bunch of other targets. And if you want to say one thing that could, you know, you said Andy Reid. He's he's a great, you know, give him a lot of time to prepare. He comes out and he delivers. He does have less time now because this Kelsey thing happened true. two days before. And, and he's come out and said, like, you don't, you don't run that offensive plan with Noah Gray. The offense changes. Yeah. You can't do the Kelsey thing. So he is having to reconfigure the offense. So I think we'll see a good game. I completely agree. This is not going to be a blowout at all. I think the Lions are going to be in this game. Um, and what a statement it would be if they won it. In Yeah, in Kansas City to go to Arrowhead Stadium oh, and man. win. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Chris Jones, if this team loses week one, he's just going to, he's just going to show up. In a limo, I'm mean, like, I'm okay. He's gonna here say, we go. He's gonna say, call. Here's, here's my here's my turn. He's gonna call the vault guy yeah. and have him put another one in. <laughs> he's like, build me another. <laughs> Full Scrooge McDuck. Oh, yeah. Especially if those running backs are are, yes. the, are the reason why. All right, quick break and back with some mailbag, including Super Bowl picks. Mm. All right, we are going to uh, jump into the mailbag here. Mike's going to give us a sexy drop and then Ooh. pick our <laughs> yes, I will pick a Super Bowl pick and uh, answer your questions. Mailbag. mailbag. Ooh. <laughs> it's a little sexy. Thefantasyfootballers.com. If you have your own question you want to submit to the show, we'd be happy to answer them, help you out. 
Click the submit a question button or dial the voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. Before we jump into the voicemails here, it has been requested, big bold print, uh, right here in the mailbag. These go was well. Was this a question from you, <laughs> Brooks? Yes. Was this a Judge Giamatti a question? question? Yes, sir. This is the first year I can remember that our Super Bowl picks, we don't have one single overlapping, not just the winner, but we don't have the same team in the game as one another. Well, Andy's already revealed his well, yeah, winner, I, so he I can't did change make, now. I made a bold prediction, and I am going to just finish the other side of it. I have the New York Jets okay. winning the Super Bowl over the Dallas Cowboys coming out of the NFC. I do not hate the Cowboys pick. Yeah. Their defense is sensational, and I I – I continue to think that Dak Prescott and those guys are underrated. And now that they can score fewer points to win more games, sure, you know it's going to go really well for the Cowboys. <laughs> that that sounded better without the L.A. crowd to boo me. <laughs> that one that that came off the way I want. You didn't feel them, you know, Owl. Can no, I, make I can a, hear them from yeah. here. Can I make a request? We have an applause button on our little soundboard here. I would love a crowd booing button. We and could just sample the L.A. crowd. That's <laughs> what I was gonna say. If you want to just grab it from there, we've we've got a great uh, free license. Bring back some PTSD. Um, I have another uh, NFC East team also losing in the Super Bowl and also doing it. Again, because it didn't last year. I've got the Eagles making it back. Congratulations, Philly. Congrats. Unfortunately, I have you just a little bit below my AFC champion, Super Bowl champion, Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Burrow getting it done. That would be a – like Joe Burrow getting back would break a long string of first-time Super Bowl – appearances by quarterbacks as, as would Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts. Yeah. this would be this would be the anomaly of both of those guys getting so Bengals back over Eagles yep by yeah. the way I almost went Jets over Packers as the dark horse oh, out, of, oh, out of the NFC the world could not handle that I mean it'd be Ro the highest rated Super Bowl ever Roger Goodell would <laughs> and either direction if Rogers beats the Packers Amazing. The, amazing. Yeah. If, if the Packers Jordan be Love beats it, Aaron Rodgers. Amazing. Yeah. All right, Mike, who's your pick? <laughs> Love it. Uh, I have the Buffalo Bills finally getting it done. Yes. Okay. Mr. Joshua Allen. And I, I feel like I have no choice but to put the 49ers in. But much like Andy, I have my dark horse. And my dark horse is the Seattle Seahawks, who I think are a better defense than people – Realize, I mean, we yeah, need, no, that's a we good. Need, we need a, a certain pick. safety to get be he healthy again, but their offense is going to be potent, potent potables. Well, I feel like if if I've got a dark horse that the Packers making it, and you have a dark horse yeah, with Seattle making it, Jason needs a dark horse. And you were looking at these this morning. There had to be in some other teams you were considering. The, uh, Any of them a dark horse? It is a really gross, very nasty oh, dark oh, horse. Cardinals. No, no, not that's, that gross. Yeah, come on, now. That's, uh, that horse is dead. <laughs> It was it was the New Orleans Saints. Ooh. Okay, uh, yeah. I think they've got a winnable division if Carr could get it done. And to be clear, Kamara's dark horses can only come out of the NFC because yeah, the AFC, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The <laughs> AFC is just riddled with elite quarterbacks. The AFC, it's really unbelievable that you've got like Jalen Hurts in the NFC, and I mean, who's the second best quarterback in the NFC? Is it Dak? I mean, is it is it uh, oh cousin, Cousins? I need an actual team list. I is mean, it Brock Purdy? It's is it Geno Smith? It's un. I mean, it's probably fortunate. it's Kyler. It's probably Kyler, but he's not playing, and he's on the worst team. And then you go to the AFC, and it's like Burrow, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson. They're all there. Deshaun Watson. I mean, this is why this is with the Jets pick. Aaron I, Rodgers. I have a hard time. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers. I have a hard time. Like Aaron Rodgers couldn't get the Packers to the playoffs in the NFC. I know the defense is much His better for the Jets. Yes, the, no, the, I, the Jets look, it's a good great, point, but. though. It's a good point. I mean, uh, well, he says he's not going to be so snappy. That's probably for the best. No one liked you last year. He came Rogers. out of the darkness. Yeah, and he realized there was some darkness in him. Mm, deep, yeah, deep. Uh, Justin Fields, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
Not yet. No, he would not be in the running. Not yet. yet. No. No, oh. Al. Your 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 uh, league of record quarterback <laughs> is not in the running for best quarterback in the NFC. He could be the best fantasy quarterback. Yeah. And our opinions. Look, last year Jalen Hurts wasn't the best quarterback in the NFC before the season started. He sure as heck was when it ended. Yeah. So that Justin Fields could do that. All right, into the mailbag we go. We've got a voicemail question here. Hey, Ballers, Dre's and Caicos here. Love the show. Quick question. I've heard you guys mention this before. When it comes to having a player playing on Thursday night, if that player is a wide receiver or running back, for instance, should they be started in the RB1-RB2 category, vice versa, wide receiver, or should they be started in the flex position? Thanks, guys. Love the show. Yeah, you, you got to put them in the – positional spots what's really funny about this is i i made that adjustment this morning on my league of record team i put isaiah pacheco in the rb spot because look we just saw what happened with travis kelsey if an injury happens you need flexibility to move positions in your flex spot there's no reason to lock a player in there but it did feel like an emotional like i'm the coach and i told isaiah pacheco you're in my starting running back <laughs> spot and i moved james cook down into my flex and I, and I drafted them in different orders, so mm -hmm. I felt like I was disrespecting the man. No, you got to humble people sometimes. James Cook needed you it? You got to let James Cook know. You oh, got you to gotta earn that <laughs> yeah. starting yeah. job. Oh. I mean, the Houston Texans are all about this move. But, yeah, yeah, it's a good question. It's a great reminder. Yeah, this is the time of year where you've got to remember because you, everyone just – for the most part, what's going to happen here? We're going to cover uh, you know, the, the week one matchups the next two days here on the show. But week one is usually pretty simple. You're going to start the guys you drafted. That's that's pretty Yay. much how it goes. And so your starting Unless lineup, you have Travis Kelsey, <laughs> the the start or Cooper Cup, uh, the starting lineup um, is usually like in the order of how you drafted. And you need to change that. You need to make sure that you don't have guys playing early in that flex. It's a it's an important reminder. Can I can I do a quick Travis Kelsey fantasy follow up question? For you guys, I'll allow sure. It. Because there are, I mean, we're about to enter a Megalable draft. There are other drafts taking place today. There'll be drafts taking place tomorrow. Oh, sure. Wow. Where does Kelsey go? Because this injury doesn't project to be a long-term injury. But I don't think he goes six, seven, eight overall anymore. I'll still take him in the second. Yeah, I would. I, I would take. I, him that's in the what second. I would say too. I, I but mean, I'm, well, let me let me throw out some. We names. could get news, but let me throw out some names. Okay, okay. so uh, let's assume he's not going around six or seven. So, would you take um, Stephon Diggs, AJ Brown type, oh, man. or would you take Travis Kelsey? I'd take those two wide receivers. I would as well, personally. Okay, it's it. Part of it is because Kelsey is older. It concerns me. It puts a little bit of the uh, the needling in my brain of like. Is he is he going to break down? Is this injury going to hobble him and he has another injury or something? Okay, middle, second round, running backs. Would you take Travis Kelsey or would you take Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard? I'll take the running backs. I would as well. Man. I think he's a late second round pick now. Yeah, yeah, he might be at the back and of the second. And then if but, you want to look, at, you, if you wanna look at the later second round wide receivers, yeah. Garrett Wilson, Jalen Waddell. Well, I'll take Kelsey. Chris Olave? Chris Olave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll take Kelsey there. Yeah. Because those guys are not oh, uh, they're not bona fide guarantees, I don't think. No, but I'd st I'd still go Are you Garrett taking Wilson. the wide receivers? I'd, I'd definitely go Garrett Wilson. I, I find myself taking Garrett Wilson over the guys way ahead of him. I've been taking him over Amon Rob and taking him over uh, Devontae Adams. I'm just trying to shoot for that breakout. All right. Uh, another voicemail. Hey, bowlers. Who do you like week one? Rashad White or Christian Watson in the flex? Half point PPR. So All right, he, Rashad White plays Minnesota on the road. Christian Watson uh, plays Chicago on the road. Uh, both are good matchups. For me, it's an easy Christian Watson. I'm a believer in the talent, and I have not been a believer in Rashad White, but I, I think a lot of people might say the I, opposite. I, I go with Rashad White that week, in week one. This, let, me, let me watch Jordan Love from the sidelines. I mean, it. this really feels like a roster construction. Chicago's favorite in the – I think they're favorite in that game by two and a half points. Yeah. Chicago? It, yeah. Wow. That's correct. That's yeah, correct. that's correct. correct. Confirmed I mean, by the Borgogan. It's Jordan Love. They Vegas doesn't know. We just yeah. have to reset the brain, though, because you, yeah. you think of Green Bay playing Chicago. Yeah, and for uh, sure. Well, you but, think of Chicago you know, alone, whoever they're playing. Chicago of last year that was – Yeah, Rodgers has a lot of equity in, in Chicago infrastructure. He owns most of that, that city. 
I think that sorry, Chicago. Have we heard turn turn have, the podcast back on? Have we heard a uh, an update on on Dobbs at all lately? I'll look because that would it. certainly factor in. If, would it? Uh, it would. If Dobbs is out, then it makes it much easier to play Watson. That's fair. I, I'm going to go white right now. Mike, w- what's your vote? Watson. Seemed like you were trying to avoid answering. It. Watson. I, I was just trying to break out the process. I lean Watson, but Rashad's wa- Rashad White's volume should be very secure. All right. This Instagram question comes from Martin. Thoughts on before season trades in redraft? Uh, are you? Is there anyone you're targeting in a before season trade? Uh, I mean, not usually, but I don't. I don't mind it if you got a player that you know that another team actually really desired, and you want to package someone who's like a, you know, like a, a four and a little bit later of a pick to move up to maybe that third rounder that you wanted. But generally, I'm not doing this right now because I've talked myself into my team. I am angry about this next question. Oh, get mad. And you will be too. Uh-oh. Instagram question from Rajia. Trade cup for Olave? question mark. This trade was vetoed by the commissioner. What Note, a- we drafted after the cup news had already broken. What are you doing? What, what a, this commissioner. What a joke of a commissioner. I mean, I. They probably the, sent us the, the the HOA fine about our about your your big celebration. This flag. guy is president of an HOA. I mean, for get sure. Out of there. Um, your yeah, light I mean, your light bulb is broken, and I'm vetoing this trade. <laughs> uh, when when uh, when you said trade cup for Olave, I didn't like the question because I was like, dang it, <laughs> which one would you take? Yeah, which one would you take? I mean, if this was a startup draft right now. Yeah, I would probably be drafting Olave over over Cup. I don't. I don't. I think Cup There's misses a There's too much risk that early in the season. And 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 when he comes back, does he reaggravate it? But there is, uh, there is absolutely the world where, even if he misses a month, the right pick is Cup because the gap on a per game basis between sure. him and Olave is. In other phenomenal. words, it's a super it's a super fair, fair trade. trade. <laughs> Vetoed. I don't like this trade. Goodness gracious. Yeah, uh, the trade is totally... I mean, you just heard both sides. Your commissioner, I would like to trade him Mm, uh, for a bag of beans. Being being a commish is... It is a thankless and difficult job. There's a lot more to going into commissioning than you think, but this is ridiculous. Take vetoing fair trades off your plate, and maybe it won't be such a burden. (laughs) Right. It's so hard. I have to veto so (laughs) many trades. That is one of the worst I've seen. Way to put a big wet fart in the start of the season, too. <laughs> love Your it. league's trying to be active, and then which it's, you love. And then it's uh, like it's it's a commission base. So is the commission ever vetoing their own trades? No, oh, I doubt yeah. it. No, no. <laughs> Just yeah, he another, co- he another, completes a trade. He's been working on it for hours. Oh, that'd be the best. Completes it, puts it in the system, and goes. Mm. <laughs> he puts puts the commish cap yeah. on. It's like this is not fair. No, it's just too good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Vetoed. <laughs> Oh, please don't do this. If you're a commissioner out there, get help. You know, find find someone. Just stop it. Get some help. <laughs> Quit the HOA too. <laughs> uh, Instagram question from Nicholas. How do you guys watch football on Sundays? Is it together as a group? Is it red zone only? Generally. It's everything. Yeah, it's, it's all the, the Master Command Center has nine televisions. So we have... Uh, the eight on the sides, they have the actual games on. We put the red zone up in the middle just to make sure we don't miss anything. And, yeah, generally we watch it as a group. And we still do miss things because the NFL has dumb, dumb scheduling where yeah. sometimes they oh put gosh. nine games in the early slate where we, we, we've we got eight TVs to watch independent full games and yep. red zone in the middle. And sometimes there's nine games. And then and then what happens when you got nine early slate games? You get three in the afternoon it's like wait you can't you can't divide that up just a little bit more even yeah but yeah. obviously the game we're skipping is the one that is there's always an, an irrelevant game all right before we close things down today a reminder tomorrow is starts of the week you yeah, hope yeah uh, hope everybody's got them in and mm, then uh matchup previews begin tomorrow they go through friday we have fantasy face off on friday we'll be reacting to the thursday night game we'll be talking about kelsey's miraculous recovery and how he dominated uh, Thursday night, right? 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We will be talking about how good Mahomes uh, looked. Um, I love that injuries and delusion have now entered already before the season. Update on Dobbs. There is no update. Basically, he okay, will wait he, for the report. Yeah, he's um, I'm sure the report's going to come out and say what we would expect, which is he's kind of questionable for this week. We don't know. It's a hamstring injury. He sat out their last preseason game with a hamstring. It's just one of those things you can't rely on. And I would not start Dobbs in week one if he is active just for fear of the re-aggravation. And um, we don't know if he'll be active. There's a new Dynasty podcast episode available right now, the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty Pod. Please and follow wherever you are listening to it was this a, podcast. It was a great show. Uh, we we each gave kind of something that we've learned, and I kind of unleash on the running back position. And Dynasty Bold Predictions. Fun. Delicious. I like it. It's a good time. Uh, you can follow us over on Twitter slash X at the FF Ballers. Follow Mike at FF Hitman. Follow Jason at Jason FFL or myself at Andy Holloway. And uh, we'll be back with another episode of the show tomorrow. If you're looking for other ways you can help support this independent podcast, leave us a five star review over on Apple. Follow us on Spotify or Apple. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.